Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions today on this Thursday, January 12th uh, with Pastor Sutton. Glad to have you here with us on this gray, dreary day. The ice of yesterday has passed. The temperature stayed fairly warm and things are kind of back to normal today. Zan's off to school and, and uh, today is the second Thursday of the month, so I'm headed to Rhinelander for my Bible study up there. It'll be interesting. I don't think I've been up there in a month uh, between the weather and holidays and things like that. Um, hopefully, they remember I'm coming. But because I'm co going up there, we gotta we gotta keep things moving here. Now, uh, Facebook has once again failed to update my screen, and I'm I'm not getting my comments the way I should. Here we go. I am scrolling here. Let's see who is here with us this morning saying hello. Kathy, good morning to you. Geraldine and Neil, hello. Michael, good morning. Oh, sure. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One more of the 300 days in Florida. Okay. But, you know, the trade-off is um, the other days are either severe storms or hurricanes. So, you know, I'm... I'm just saying, I mean, we can have a tornado here, but um, that, that doesn't affect the whole state usually. Jill and John, good morning to you guys. Mushtaq, good evening. There's Bonnie uh, telling us the weather. And uh, yeah, it is his first day back since Friday because he was at the Dorian Music Festival Monday and, Monday and Tuesday, and then they had Wednesday off for the ice. Renee, good morning. Why was I thinking of you yesterday, Renee? Well, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, but anyway. Uh, and Verna, good morning. Did I see? I didn't see Jerry. Well, Jerry, you're probably lurking here somewhere, too, so good morning to you. And to those of you who aren't piping in and saying hi or whatever, uh, good morning. Oh, there we go. There's there's Ann and Deb. Good morning to you guys. Glenn, good morning. Um, just had to refresh my screen again. Let's get, let's get underway here. If you have the Lutheran service book page 295 daily prayer for individuals and families a morning order i have my treasury of daily prayer here as oh it's starting to look kind of beat up like i've had it for more than 10 years or something in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen in the morning O lord you hear my voice in the morning i prepare a sacrifice for you and watch my mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 63, verses 3 through 11, Psalm 63, verses three through 11. See, I got to keep doing this refresh thing periodically so I can see if anyone else. Oh, there's Jerry and there's Ashley. Good morning to you guys. Our Psalm, Psalm 63, starting at verse three. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food. And my mouth will praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down to the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exult, for the mouths of liars will be stopped. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Because of our timing today, I got I'm just gonna i I'm just gonna leave the psalm as it is. We're gonna go right on to Ezekiel chapter thirty four today, verses one through twenty four. Um more good stuff. We're following on the tail here of, of uh, Ezekiel as the watchman who, who declares God's word to the people, warns them. So Ezekiel 34, verse 1 through 24, starting here at verse 1. 
the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds. Thus says the Lord God, Ah, shepherds of Israel, who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought, and with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the wild beasts. My sheep were scattered, they wandered all over, over all the mountains and on every high hill. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth, with none to search or seek for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, declares the Lord God, surely because my sheep have become prey, and my sheep have become food for all the wild beasts, since there was no shepherd, and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds have fed themselves and have not fed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my sheep at their hand and put a stop to their feeding the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths, that they may not be food for them. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep, that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture, that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture, and to drink of clear water, that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust with at all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey, Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. So um, I'm refreshing the screen here again, guys, because I see Jeannie showed up and I just don't know when names show up. God's first words in this section, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Now he's, he's not 
talking about the men out in the pastures watching over the sheep. Think about that. We call Jesus the good shepherd because he says that's what he is. Um, and, and throughout Scripture, um, God's Word handles, uh, handles the, the idea of um, the idea of the church as shepherd and sheep. I don't think you can disagree with me on that. Um, the people in the pews, the people who are the members of the congregations, the people who are following Christ are, well, actually, all the people in the world are the sheep. Everyone, right? Um, and the shepherds are those whom God has called to oversee the sheep. Now, in the time of Ezekiel, this is the, the priests and the scribes. We, aren't, we don't have Pharisees yet. Um, but we have priests and we have scribes. Scribes are the ones who are to teach the word to the people. They, they study the scriptures. They record what uh, the learned men say. That's why they're scribes. Um, and, and they study the word and they, and they teach it. Um, the priests are the ones who are carrying out the daily practices in the temple. And, and they're to learn, earn their living from what they do. But they take advantage of it. Um, they're taking advantage of it in, in the time of Ezekiel and uh, even even worse in the time of, of Christ at the at the at the second temple. And so this is not only prophesying against and, and remember prophecy isn't foretelling necessarily, although it can be, but this kind of prophecy is speaking the word of the Lord with authority. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, thus says the Lord God, should not shepherds feed the sheep? Yeah, that's what a shepherd's supposed to do. He's supposed to bring them to good pasture. Care for the sheep. Right? Um, but you, the shepherds, eat the fat, clothe yourselves with the wool, and slaughter the fat ones, and do not feed the sheep. The weak are not given strength, the sick have not been healed, the injured are not bound up, and the strayed and lost are not brought back or sought. Happens today, right? In, in some places, those who are shepherds seek not to serve, but to be served. They go looking for the the wealthy members of the congregation to uplift themselves. They look for for those who uh, um, are not in need and, and serve them uh, when when they should also um, when they should also be looking for those who are weak in faith and seeking to strengthen them. And those who have been hurt by the church to bind them up and and and. Uh, Heal them, the sick, who are looking to another, another gospel, which Paul says there is no other gospel, and he is right. Anyone who preaches a gospel other than the one which he delivered, which is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life, anyone who preaches another gospel, let them be anathema, right? But the shepherds of Israel have ruled over their people um, with uh, a hammer, so to speak. With harshness, you have ruled them, scattered them, and they become food for wild beasts. Wild beasts are, are, are the, those who are outside of the church, those who have heard the word and turned away, right? I mean, what's the difference between natural-born man as he, as he is conceived of in, in his mother and born and regenerate man, baptized and living in Christ. Well, the difference is one is an animal, right? What's the difference between somebody who doesn't believe in Christ and a and a and a feral cat, or a, or a feral dog, or or a, a wolf, right? They live by the flesh, but one who's been baptized into Christ ought to be living by the Spirit. That's what Paul tells us. 
If we have the Spirit, then let us walk by the Spirit. And so to be outside and denying Christ is to be a wild beast. But there's still the sheep who, who have heard the word and who live in the word and yet are not being treated as, well, who are not being cared for as, as sheep. i got to be honest, sheep are not very bright. They get themselves in trouble, and that's why there's shepherds to guide them. I mean, if, if, you didn't, if, if you didn't need the shepherds, if the sheep were smart, the sheep could just go out in the pasture and, and do whatever they wanted and come back in the evening, and nobody would have to worry about it. But the shepherds are there to protect them from the wild beasts, to, to bind them up when they are injured, or to heal them when they're sick. Yes, they trim the wool, right? I mean, that's one of the purposes for having sheep is wool fibers to make clothing to cover themselves. Um, but that's what the shepherds are there for, is to care for them, to see to it that they go to the good pasture, not wherever they want, but to the good pasture. But the Lord says, when the time comes, I will be their shepherd. I will rescue the flock. They'll no longer be prey. And I'll set up over them one shepherd. Now, he says the shepherd is his servant, David. But when he says David, he's talking about the bloodline of David. He's talking about Christ. He's talking about Jesus, right? Jesus is the son of David. There's generations in between, but that's what we say. I am the son of my father, but I am also the son of my father's father's father. Right? At least in Hebrew understanding. You know, in the, in the, in the Eastern languages, there was no way of expressing grandfather, great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, that, that lineage idea. Everybody was, everyone who came before you in your line was your father, and everyone who came after them was their son. So David is just as much the son of um, Jesse as he is the son of uh, Abraham. In fact, David, David was the line of uh was, yeah, David was a line of Judah, so he's a son of Judah. He's a son of Obadiah. He's the son of Jesse. And Jesus is just as much the, well, I mean, he's got a different deal going on, doesn't he? Because Jesus' father is God, but he's born of Mary, who is of the line of David. So his human body, according to, to the lineage of David, but his divine body, according to Christ. Now, there you can't separate them or divide them. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be a prince among them, and I am the Lord. I have spoken. God made a promise to be our shepherd, and he sent his only begotten son to be the good shepherd. And the shepherd does and did and is still doing for us what a good shepherd does, right? When the fight comes, when the wild beast comes to attack, the shepherd defends the sheep even to the point of his own life. Christ defended our lives, his whole creation, even to the point of death on the cross, obedient to the Father to the end, so that in him we might have the righteousness and a good shepherd. For he was raised on the third day and reigns. Prince over his people, you and I by grace and mercy in Christ Jesus. Amen. Got to be quick today. Our prayer of the day. Almighty and most merciful God, the protector of all who trust in you, strengthen our faith and give us courage to believe that in your love, you will rescue us from all adversities. Through Christ Jesus, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our prayer for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning. Lord Jesus Christ, I marvel at your wondrous love for me, which is new again this day. All throughout my life, I have been unfaithful to you. I have idolatrously chased my evil thoughts and desires. I have adulterously loved those things that the, of the world more than I have loved you. But still you have chosen me. You have given yourself to death for me. You have cleansed me through the water and the word at my baptism. Thank you for making me part of your beautiful and radiant bride, the church, which you purchased with your own most holy, precious blood. As your church, help us to live in the light of your cross, scatter the darkness of divisions, strife, hostility, grudges, stubbornness, laziness, apathy, and heresy that so often plague and hinder us. Let us bask in your merciful presence as we gather around your holy word and sacraments each week. Allow us to sorrow together, rejoice together, and forgive one another. Guard and protect me from neglecting and despising your word and your people. Give me a fervent desire to come to church each week. Teach me to treasure your word and sacraments. Let me hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Feed me with your life-giving, sin-forgiving, body and blood. Enable me to taste and see that you are good. Strengthen my faith. Help me look to you alone for forgiveness, life, and salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, our good shepherd. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your mercy upon those who are suffering, whether that whether the suffering is in unemployment or old age or injury or other form of malady or maliciousness in this world. We ask that you guard them from the wild beasts and that you call them to faithful shepherds who will strengthen them, feed them, and bind up their wounds. We ask, Lord, that you give them your mercy through your son. Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, and all who we name in our heart and who call upon your most holy name. Hear them for the sake of your son who died and rose again for us, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, that's our daily devotion for this Thursday, January 12th. Back here tomorrow on Friday for a little time together again. But for now, we're going to close this off, and I'm going to head to Rhinelander. So God's peace be with you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.